Stuff the tech, please. Yeah, I'm Christopher Dickey. I'm the Newsweek's Middle East uh, regional editor and also the Paris bureau chief. Thank you very much. You've been here talking to us about um, your perspectives on both the history and the legacy of the, uh, of the Middle East and also like, the future. I mean, what um, do you think contributes, what do you think the Arab Peace Initiative contributes to the um, hope for peace um, in the Middle East, both between uh, Israel and Palestine, but also the Arab region? Well, I think the, the Arab Peace Initiative is the most serious framework that has ever existed uh, for making peace in the Middle East based on a two-state solution. And I think that it was a good idea in 2002, although it was overwhelmed in 2002 by the violence that was taking place in Israel. I mean, we forget that when it was announced at the Beirut summit of the Arab League, the, uh, it was at the height of the suicide bombing that was taking place in Israel. Uh, so there have always been problems with timing. Uh, but in terms of the substance of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the whole peace initiative, it's a very good idea. And I think that when uh, King Abdallah of uh, Jordan talks about a 57-state solution, um, he's on the right track. And I think that's also uh, very much the way the Obama administration is looking at the situation. It doesn't mean that there won't be bilateral and individual negotiations. Uh, with Syria, with Lebanon, and so on, and with Iran. But it does mean that essentially an offer is being made to Israel that is a litmus test about whether people want peace or not. If they want peace, there it is. There is the framework. If they say the framework is no good, then it's up to them to tell us what kind of peace they envision. And nobody has ever explained what kind of peace they envision if they don't use that framework. And given the potential that you've been talking about for peace to move quite quickly in the next two years towards you know, the Arab Peace Initiative and the roadmap, what role do you think young people in the region have to play in galvanizing this peace? Well, I think it's really important uh, to constantly be looking at what the different parties are thinking and saying and doing and, and where they're coming from. Um, I think it's important not to get immersed in one narrative that then negates completely the other narrative. Uh, Israel is not going to disappear. Uh, the Israeli state is not going to commit suicide, as they say, in a one-state solution that then leaves the Jews overwhelmed by an Arab and Muslim majority. That's not going to happen. Uh, so while that idealistically sounds like a nice idea and we can make some kind of analogy with apartheid in South Africa, uh, I think that's a fruitless path to pursue. It makes more sense to, uh, for each side to understand why the majorities on both sides want peace and how they envision that peace. For the Israelis, it's a question of living in security and continuing to develop an economy that's a $200 billion economy. For the Palestinians, it's about having an economy but not only having an economy, it's about having borders that are secure, not having Israeli patrols driving through their towns, not having Israeli settlers telling them what they can and can't do. All of that is vital to the Palestinians. So both sides need to understand what that framework is about. And the truth is both sides do. But the Israeli political system has made it possible for the, that will to peace to be defeated again and again. And also the violence of some groups intent on uh, the Islamic Jihad and uh, Hamas, intent on showing resistance for its own sake, has also made it almost impossible to move forward for the last several years. But I think, with an, and then finally, the, the U.S. administration, I think, was not uh, acting in good faith when it threw away, essentially, the principles of 242 and 338, land for peace, return to 67 borders, right of return. Maybe there will be no return to 67 borders. Never, maybe there will never be a, right, a complete return of Palestinian uh, uh, refugees. But those are negotiating positions you don't dispense with standing next to Ariel Sharon in the Rose Garden in, in 2004. So I think that you're going to see the Obama administration, uh, how, how shall I say, uh, recovering, recouping those positions uh, to try and deal with real diplomatic solutions. So you're saying the role of young people is to continually question what they're being Absolutely, shown by yes. I got a little bit away from that, but the, yes, in fact, what I'm saying is young people have to understand the narratives on both sides, wherever they're coming from, and not get locked in to a confrontational view that says we're right 
and you're wrong, and therefore that's all there is to the story, because it's, it's a story is much more complicated than that. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank